When Akagami was young, his father decided to leave him to find his purpose in life, which was to know many girls. He found it interesting and enthusiastically supported it. Later, when he grew up, he realized it was a mistake and his mentality also changed. While his friends his age were looking at women all day, he only knew how to read books and refused any interaction. He is determined not to get involved with women. But everyone just needs to hear Akagami's name to know immediately that he is his father's son. Akagami is determined to dispel the rumors by studying to pass the civil service exam. While he was thinking, out of nowhere a large object rolled towards him and crushed him. I was about to swear a few words when I saw a healthy purple-haired girl carrying two items approaching and asking. His eyes seemed to glaze over at her cute, healthy appearance, ignoring the fact that she was in pain. He immediately went home to control himself. But then that whole night his instincts were awakened and he couldn't sleep. From then on, Akagami changed completely, liking to watch girls and taking the lead in drinking and socializing parties. Only when he received the consequences of being fired from his part-time job and his academic performance declined, did he regret it. Immediately, Akagami realized he had to practice, so he applied to quit school. Go to the temple where my uncle used to be an abbot to cultivate himself and cultivate his character. Thinking that coming here, he would forget about that purple-haired girl. But the person who opened the door to welcome was Aoba. She quickly changed her shirt and accidentally slipped, revealing her sexy image. Akagami tried to run away but tripped and fell. Seeing her run out, he thought he had to leave immediately but did the opposite, grabbed her, and even told her to marry him. After a while, they calmed down and sat down to drink tea. She said the abbot was currently away. She thought he would only come tomorrow so she didn't know what to say so she asked about his hobbies. Too stressed, Akagami excused himself to go to the bathroom. Unexpectedly, as soon as he stepped outside, he heard a cat meowing in the well and immediately jumped up, and Akagami rushed into it. Later, Aoba calls Kiki and asks her why her appointment is a day early. You say the target of your blind date is with you right now. Aoba hung up the phone in confusion and met his younger sister Tsuku who was visiting. Aoba quickly told her about seeing a ghost, but she didn't believe it. As soon as he finished speaking, he saw Akagami approaching with his whole body covered in blood. He accidentally falls and squeezes her chest causing Aoba to hit him. They then ran away and met Kara's sister there holding a cat. Kara looked at the young man like a hungry ghost and immediately fainted. In another room, Mia, the girl with her hair tied in two, is teaching Kagura to read and finds it too noisy. As soon as he opened the door, Akagami fell on him. A moment later, Akagami was also exhausted and slowly walked towards Aoba, trying to explain to her but was beaten again. Kiki is also present to explain this confusion. When Akagami's uncle introduced him here, he forgot that this temple prohibited men. Akagami is also mistaken as Aoba's target. Both sides were at fault, so Kiki asked everyone to let him stay with everyone. Akagami knew he had to leave. Maybe Aoba didn't recognize him. He promised to meet again and decided to leave so as not to affect everyone. But now it's too late so the last bus has already run away. Struggling to know what to do, Aoba suddenly appeared, asked him to stay one night and promised to convince everyone to help him. Akagami wanted to refuse, but she offered to make up for getting him into trouble twice. Suddenly Aoba heard Akagami's full name and immediately took him to the temple to meet everyone. It turned out that his father owed this temple a large amount of money and he promised to work to repay the debt. Finally, they agreed to take him in to pay off his debt. First, Aoba took Akagami around. There must be statues around the temple, but due to economic difficulties, they had to make the statues themselves. Aoba's sisters saw their sister bewitched, now they have to think of a way to get him out of here. Kiki suggests that the easiest way is to seduce him, to have him reveal his true nature so that Aoba can send him away. The chosen one was none other than Tsuku because she was not a monk. The next morning, Akagami woke up early to clean and cook rice. He didn't think he would feel useful and pure again so soon. As soon as he finished speaking, he immediately met Aoba dressed in thin clothes to greet him. Too busy looking causes the dish being cooked on the stove to burn. 
Tsuku sneaked a look at him, looking at his sister's chest. She is determined, determined to chase after Akagami. First, she let him change into summer clothes in the cold weather, then do chores like sweeping and cleaning. Surprisingly, even the bathtub was clean. After being cleaned by Akagami, from cleaning the room to handling the accounting of this place, he can do it all. Suku must have a different personality. She let Akagami practice under a cold artificial waterfall. Suku stood on the roof pumping water from the source, thinking it would be difficult to give up. As soon as Aoba came home from school, she was cute again in her schoolgirl outfit, making him hot. After a while, he went to soak in hot water to recover. But in just a moment he wanted to get up and cook for his sisters. As soon as I opened the bathroom door, I saw Tsuku kneeling there. As it turns out, Tsuku wanted to stage Akagami's attack on him so that in a few minutes Aoba would come to meet him. Then, her foot staggered and hit the wardrobe, causing things to fall. He rushed forward to help her and accidentally kissed her reluctantly. Coincidentally, Aoba also came to witness the scene. Her face darkened and she said nothing. From then on, Tsuku saw Aoba avoiding him, so he had to go inside and ask. It turns out the older sister was embarrassed when she saw Akagami naked. But Tsuku's seduction plan was also revealed because Kiki told Aoba. Aoba sees that although Akagami is rude, he is still a person with strong will and is an honest and sincere person. Maybe they should give him time to express himself. But unfortunately, Kiki came to tell me that you have packed your things and left here. It turned out that the young man went down the mountain and surrendered to the police, but they did not care. When he returned to his old house, the landlord kicked him out because he had rented it to someone else. Akagami is currently hiding under the bridge to shelter from the rain. Suddenly, Aoba arrived. She came to find him and returned. Order him to lean on her. After hearing this, Akagami understood and Suku's agreement made him want to return to the temple again. However, because she accidentally took away Suku's first kiss, she gave him a new debt. Mia sees that Aoba and Suku have returned, but brings Akagami back with her, surprising her. Akagami was preparing to cook rice when Kura helped him. Outside is the kitchen, behind that door are two goddesses taking a bath. The boy immediately struggled with his thoughts, but Kura stimulated his instincts. Kara was about to open the bathroom door when Akagami quickly rushed out to stop her, not knowing that it was Akagami who opened the door. Then Mia stepped forward, pointed straight at him and said that it was all his fault that this place fell. She did not expect that her two sisters would be captured by Akagami so quickly. Mia proposed a duel. She won't send him away again but will remove something if he loses. Aoba's sisters weren't home to watch, they had to go out. After completing his preparations, Mia was ready to fight. She still hadn't forgotten about Akagami stabbing her on the first day, so she made up her mind. With her first slash, she only slashed him as a warning and blew off part of his hair. Akagami turned pale with fear. Thinking he was afraid she would be hurt, he decided to drop his sword and use his bare hands to block it. Just as the cloth wrapped around her chest loosened, Kagura conveniently held it for her, stopping Mia's final sword strike. Thanks to that, Akagami successfully blocked the attack. She is a loser and must suffer punishment. Kagura suggests the notebook, which contains all kinds of difficulties and practices that make people enlightened even when they don't want to. Mia has to do one of those things. Akagami heard the name of the book and wanted it, because his goal was enlightenment. But what did he say that made Mia misunderstand that he wanted her breasts? She completely disagreed and ran away, and Akagami was disappointed because even if he wanted to practice hard, he wouldn't let him. That night Mia entered Akagami's room to fulfill his request. Akagami thought he was dreaming, but when he saw Kagura filming, he thought they were setting a trap so he flatly refused. He just needed that book. Hearing that, she realized she had misunderstood and ran away. So the reconciliation between the two failed. She hated that there was a man in this temple. As soon as I opened the door, I saw Akagami kneeling there. When I asked him, I learned that Kagura told him to come here. Mia was so angry that she wanted to go find her friend to pay the bill, 
but the door was locked. Akagami thought about giving her a blanket to keep from the cold, but she didn't need it. Akagami didn't dare to ask anymore because this girl was very picky, but he was still afraid that she would be cold so he forced her to get a blanket to cover her. Mia was pushed to the end so she cried loudly. Yes, you shouldn't make a woman cry, but if you do, let her know that you don't want to see it. After a while, the two sat down to talk to each other. She wants you to forget everything that happened. She admitted that at that time, that was her true self. She comes from a prestigious foreign family. From a young age, she idolized her mother because she was the center of attention, attracting thousands of boys around her. She wanted to be like her mother but didn't realize that everyone's eyes hated her. By the time she was isolated, it was too late to regret it. Luckily, Kagura befriended her. They come here together to cultivate themselves and nurture their personalities. She thought she would lose that personality if she could no longer see men. Unexpectedly, Akagami appeared and destroyed her efforts. Mia turned to Akagami and saw him crying because she saw that her situation was similar to his. Then just hearing that made Kagura open the door to let them out. There was one more important thing that Aoba had forgotten. That's why she had to go on a blind date. Aoba didn't really want to either, but she wasn't allowed to stay here anymore. If she succeeds in the blind date, she can invite a new abbot to the temple and keep the temple intact. Akagami admired her sacrifice and decided to accompany her to the end. Unfortunately, they missed the bus. Akagami quickly borrowed a motorbike to take her away.